Hello everybody, my name is Panda and I have a special guest here with me today. Um, sorry, my friend is a bit shy and YouTube isn't something new for him, you know. Um, but wait, uh, hang on. Uh, could you turn on your camera now? Don't worry, they are nice people, so... Okay. Hello. Hey, Missy, thanks for joining. How are you? I'm very good, thank you for having me. Yes, um, so for those of you who don't know who he is, he is Misty and he makes top 10 enemies series videos and you can easily find enemies from animes from any genre you like and he he makes top 10 videos for almost any genre, trust me, like edgy stuff like that, you know. Um, and he made a top 10 worst anime ever, so we don't, we when don't you watch that, anymore. you don't have to worry about going through the pain of watching it yourself. And yeah. What did you want to say? We don't talk about the worst. <laughs> okay. People don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, enough of that. Let's start with some basic questions first. <clears throat> okay, Go ahead. where are you from? I am from Canada, Quebec in particular. Um, don't know if you're familiar with the country. Uh, Quebec is on the east side. I came from a very land down under. Now uh, a very small town called uh, Cowansville, and from now on I live in a, a little bigger city outside, but it's not Montreal. I live near Montreal, about an hour away, but it's not really the city of the uh, province. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um. So, how old are you? Currently, I am 26, however, we are in 2014, depending on whenever the time you're watching this video, I might be older by now. <laughs> yeah, and uh, are you male or female? Uh, I'm a guy. Wait, wait uh, um, yeah, I, I guess, um, yeah. Um, so, uh, never mind that. Let's move on to the questions. Um, first question. A question that everybody wants to know the answer of. Um, how long does the editing of a single top 10 video take, excluding the, vi uh, the years of watching all those animes? From start to finish my process is pretty lengthy. Uh, I will normally begin by finding a topic that I want to cover, like let's say I want to cover the top 10 best angel anime. Then I'm gonna go and do some research, find the anime that people consider to be the best one and sort them throughout some kind of research. This can take me about like two or three hours depending on how shady the topic is. Like let's say I do the top 10 best incest anime and it's gonna be a lot more restrained. But for big titles normally in two hours I can sort it out. After that I do a, a script for everything that I want to list. That takes me almost like 10 hours to do. Uh, listing every wow. entries, <laughs> finding an in an intro and an outro to have something more giving it more meat to my content and once I have the script then I begin the narrating process which takes me roughly two to three hours once I have that I go and find my clips and my um, my footage my pictures everything the editing I'm gonna need like the uh, the small chibi that you provided me with and mm -hmm. then I fiddle with the editing overall and that takes me roughly 20 hours. So all in all, I'd say about 40 hours. It sums up pretty much the one top 10, depending on how on each video. Normally it can vary between 30 hours and 40 hours, but my biggest one took me 40. So it doesn't really go past that. Holy shiz. <laughs> so that's like two days of editing. Oh pretty much my God. <laughs> oh, so that is a lot, guys. That is a lot. And wow, do you get any sleep <laughs> when I, you're doing that much? There was a time where I didn't have much, but now I'm doing YouTube full time. Uh, there is a lot more sleep provided for me, but before that, I was doing 80 hours a week with my other job, which, which I was doing 40 hours plus YouTube, which take me 40 for a video. Had it up for weeks of 80 hours. It's pretty hard. To come by especially since I have a girlfriend to take care of and chores and I live by myself so there's nobody making me my lunches so I have to cook clean and everything that goes with the bachelor life oh okay well that must have been a rough time <laughs> pretty much 
Okay, question number two. Vivid colors or no colors? Always vivid colors. They're, okay. they're my motto. You have vivid colors, that's a win in my book, and I'm gonna take it anytime. <laughs> okay, question number three. Where comes the idea for the name Misty Chronexia from? That is a really... That name has been here for quite a while. Misty Chronexia is a character that I invented back when I was a teenager, around 16, 17 year old. I was writing a novel, which was in French, and just today I... Well, not today, but a few weeks ago, it started being published, so now it's available in my book format. I don't have it with me right now, but I have it in my apartment. Um, she's a character that I invented, and she's basically this pink hair girl you see on my channel all the time. She is a human that has the possibility to become the goddess of time, which goes through a different challenge to unlock these power and her goddess entity is named Cronexia, which is the other side of the character. Uh, together they form somewhat of a team and they try to help their friends to solve a very big case that I would like to let people find out if they ever want to read the book, which right now is not available in English, though there's been some talking about the translation, so it could take some time, but maybe someday it will be available. Okay, that I, I didn't know about that. I, I had some French class, so maybe I'll get it. <laughs> it's, pr it's a pretty big book, though. <laughs> well, okay, but I'll give it a try, I think. <laughs> I'm so, glad to. Oh, okay, cool. And question number four. How many anime shows did you watch? All in all, I stopped keeping count for a while back. I started watching anime when I was 12 and I've been doing it pretty intensely until I was, well, until right now. So I'd say roughly between 1000 and 2000. Don't quote me exactly on the number as I don't know it. It's, but you you give me an idol and the odds are I have probably seen it. If not, I am sure that I know it. So <laughs> I, I'm pretty knowledgeable in the genres. Oh, well, uh, I've like watched 40 or 50. <laughs> <laughs> well, given my choice of job, it kind of requires me to know a lot about them. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and are you watching them in subbed or dubbed? Uh, my story is kind of iffy on that. I started watching it sub because at the time when I was younger very little shows were dubbed if any at all uh, the only one you could find dub were the big one like Dragon Ball Z Sailor Moon and then some smaller titles like Inuyasha and uh, Cardcaptor Sakura uh, after that they started getting a little more popular and they started making more dubs but I was already way ahead of them and I started watching them sub for about until I reached 18, 17, 18 years old, then I entirely dropped the uh, the subtitles and I only watched them raw. So that way managed to help me learn Japanese. So the Japanese I know right now is thanks to the anime. I never took any classes, but I'm very <laughs> fluent now in the Japanese speaking. Though I do not read the kanjis. Okay. That That is awesome that you can understand the Japanese language. Yeah, but I wouldn't rec recommend it to people who actually want to learn Japanese. It's not a quick way or a common way and it's not really helpful, but it's the way I took. Uh, if people want to learn Japanese, I'd recommend taking either class or using a software like Rosetta Stone. That would be much more helpful for them. Yeah, and I've, I've heard that the kanjis are pretty important if you want to read. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Um, well. Without them, you're pretty much screwed in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. Question number 4.75. <laughs> Is there an anime or multiple ones that you would like to erase out of your mind? Honestly, no, because every single one of them kind of brought me something that I didn't have or allowed me to learn something new and make something out of it, like my top 10 worst enemy. These are the ones that probably would fit in your kind of question, which I, I didn't really enjoy them, or I wish I kind of skipped on it, but 
at the same time, I can't say that it was a bad thing that I watched them because I need the knowledge to cover everything. So, uh, although there's been some weird experience, Boku no Pico has been one pretty <laughs> marking that you can see me watch live on my channel if you would like to see it. Uh, otherwise, no, I, I wouldn't strike out any of them. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Watching people watch Boku no Pico is very funny. <laughs> it's, it's pretty uh, traumatizing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor Misty. <laughs> okay, next question. Question number five. What is your favorite anime genre? Uh, that's going to be pretty tricky because it's not as much as a genre that I would enjoy as much as titles by themselves. I am very fond of shonen that are, you know, sometimes they're pretty cliche and it's it's always come back to the same thing. Some guy comes out at first and he's pretty weak and then he trains and get better. I, I kind of like that kind of thematic, which it helps the character grows because I love character development. But if I was to choose only one genre, I would say the intellectual ones, like uh, anime, like... Um, Death Note, uh, Kaiji, mm -hmm. um, anime where you can see the mind process of a character and it's really something that appeals to me because I like to think of myself like someone who's pretty smart and uh, seeing how characters interact with each other is sometimes really rewarding. Okay, cool. Um, next question. Question number six. Why did you start to make YouTube videos and why? Top tens. Uh, that well, to, to answer this question, I kind of have to go back to my early days of YouTube. When I first started doing videos, um, I was doing game walkthroughs. I first got inspired by a let's player called Proton John SA, which is a pretty big YouTube icon. Um, he did videos way back when I was younger, about six, seven years ago. When I first started, I was 16. No, 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 wait. I was 18 or 19. And I started making videos like four, four, five years of uh, video games content. And it wasn't really panning out. I had like 4,000 subscribers. I don't think I was any funnier than I was back then. Uh, but it, I, it didn't really work that much but one day I made a top 10 videos of about anime like this is my 10 favorite show you should check him out and surprisingly it, it catch on I had over a hundred thousand views and it was a poor slideshow with uh, pictures and a small clip at the end it was me talking all over a black screen it wasn't that good it was terrible uh, however people like watching that so I started making more top tens and eventually I kind of dropped the whole game walkthroughs and now I'm doing top 10 full time and it's as you can see it's catching up pretty well okay so next question uh, question number seven your amount of subscribers is exploding at the moment do you think that anime is becoming mainstream and it's like Kill a Kill or Attack on Titan have been very popular lately. I don't think it's becoming mainstream, however it is definitely becoming a lot more popular than it was merely a few years ago. Uh, anime is not taking over the world, but it's slowly becoming more accessible to people, and the more it goes, more people actually get to know what it is, and there's a lot less um, taboo that comes with watching cartoons now as it was back then when people were like oh cartoons for kids now people can see that it's actually very more mature topics that you can get sometime when you watch anime like let's say death note it's not it's not for kids definitely not for kids and it's really more mature there's a lot of other topics as well like uh, Ghost in the Shell, that's very more of a mature topic, and sure, there, there's still show that's for kids like Hamped Arrow, but there will always be, and that's, I, I think the thing is, people need to find a line in between each of them, but there's really titles that are marking people a lot more, like, uh, like you said, Attack on Titan or Kill la Kill, that are reaching a lot more people because they have great stories, and the fact that they are anime kind of bring them into watching different show after that. Okay, um, yeah, 
I guess it's the power of the internet, right? <laughs> yeah, that is correct. Okay, so um, I guess you've answered the next question already. Question number eight. Your first video on your channel has been uploaded f about five months ago, which is pretty new. Though you do have a second channel where the first videos are ten months old. How did you get success successful in ten months? It's hard to say. I, I think a lot have to do with my thumbnails. Because people, when they see my video, they read the title and then they see somewhat of a um, lewd picture. It, <laughs> That's it, my next next question, dude. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's an eye grabber. People find that and they're like, oh, what is that? And then they find on my, they click on the video and check it and they're like, oh, it's actually pretty interesting. This guy knows his stuff and he put some funny things in there, and people grow to like me but weren't if not from my silly pictures or or my title that are sometimes just just an eye grabber um, people wouldn't probably get to click on my stuff just as much and I think that does play a major role in how successful I've become <laughs> okay so my next question was that your first very successful video was top 10 most hilarious anime series. It was a really great video in my opinion. And it got me into watching anime last summer break. And it got over 100,000 clicks, which was a lot for you back then. And what was new about this video that made it so popular? The thumbnail? <laughs> Uh, like I said, thumbnails also play a great role in getting my subscribers or my fans to watch my stuff because I did have a class in marketing and whether you like it or not, sex sells and sex will always sell. And whether you consider yourself to be too proud to use that as a marketing tactic, company nowadays use it and they don't feel bad about it and neither do I because it's it's just an eye grabber if you watch my video you'll find out that yeah sometimes the topics can relate to sexual tendency but all of my content is always PG-13 they have like swearing at best but everything is censored everything is neatly put to be family friendly despite the topics being more lewd sometimes <laughs> okay um and the last and final question of my questions is question number 10. And what the hell is all of this Misty and you the viewer alley by Vivid Colors fight against the evil, evil Pianos and Octavia? That is a really... <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a weird thing because it started as a, a joke, actually. Um, when I made my top 10 best fantasy anime, I believe, at the end, I always have this kind of skit that's me making a joke or something to help people agree to subscribe to my channel. So in that particular one, I had a topic where I said that people who didn't subscribe got suddenly dropped the piano on them and they didn't live to see another day. So from then on, I, the joke kind of evolved because people found to like it and the pianos kind of became a, their own entities. And I also had the You The Viewers, which was a joke where I named my fan base You The Viewers, where it's you, it's a Japanese name, you, obviously, so it kind of felt in line with my, uh, my topic, which was anime, and You The Viewers being, you know, a pun itself. Uh, eventually, they grew up to be like the enemies of the pianos and then more characters kind of appearing into this and Vivid Colors was some kind of a god because in one of my series that is called Opening Mondays I had uh, some kind of geek gasm when it was really colorful and from that point onward it became like Lord Vivid Colors is a <laughs> god that protects everyone and then after that, then Evil Pianos got their own general, because Misty was considered a general it herself. And from that point onward, Octavia became the uh, the bad guy against Misty, which is... Octavia is a really fun character. Uh, she's somewhat of a tsundere girl, which is in love with Misty, but is at the same time despise extremely much the Yuda viewers, because <laughs> Misty only cares about the Yuda viewers, and they want to fight the pianos that are destroying everybody 
and then Octavio just want to be like noticed by Misty so it kind of gives a, a cool gimmick that I thought was an, a nice touch uh, Octavio is voiced by my girlfriend which isn't here at the moment but whenever I need a, a voice she is the one to provide it and there is something big planning on where I I had two channel which was somewhat of a big story where uh, I had to switch from the previous channel to this one that I have right now which is the bigger one and before that I had that one channel that kind of got put on hold but right now I'm planning several stuff to bring it back to life and have the um, Octavia take over that side so it's gonna be her channel versus Misty and it's gonna have like the boat channel fighting together it's gonna have the same kind of stuff anime top tens on each but it's gonna be varied a little more oh, okay it was um, pianos have taken over Misty Cronexia yeah <laughs> and I've seen that you like put Octavia in brackets <laughs> there yep yep that has been a change because um, my channel which was originally Misty Cronexia now has become Misty Cronexia Octavia side so uh, there's gonna be a lot more change on that channel as well. There, this one's gonna be like the Octavia channel is gonna be more used for the um, the game walkthroughs that I still plan to bring back a little. Not gonna be the main topic, but every time I feel like playing a game and just having fun, why not record it and put it on that channel so people can like get to know me a little more. And then having more top tens, more anime content related, that's gonna be helped with my lovely girlfriend that is also pretty good in editing as well. So mm. she's gonna be providing me some extra help. So we're gonna have both channels kind of going at the same pace towards a like something of a giant rivalry between the two channels. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's something we'll be looking forward to, right? <laughs> and... I hope so. <laughs> yeah. And I have four more questions by my viewers. First one, do you love Mr. Ray Honda? Honestly, I don't know much about him because I haven't got to see a lot of his stuff, but from what I've seen, I've seen a few videos and I think he's a pretty funny guy. He's not really out there because not a lot of people know about him, but hopefully this somewhat of a shadow can help him a little more. Uh, he has great stuff, he's a funny guy, he's also from Montreal, which I, I believe he is from Montreal, and <laughs> um, I, I mean, he's a good guy, but his content is like in, a, in an ocean of other game watchers and stuff like that, so it's really yeah. hard to get picked out by everybody when you're just doing the same stuff as everybody else, so it's, it's a little harder, but I think if he keeps going at it, there's a lot of chance that he's gonna persevere and work out of this. Yeah, and he's uploading a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like daily well, videos. That's quantity doesn't equal quality because yeah. I've been doing like walkthroughs for four years. I had over a thousand videos and now they're all gone, but it, I only had four thousand subscribers and I had over a thousand videos. But now I only have like 60, 70 ish, and I'm over 250,000 subscribers. So it's, it's really, if you put a lot of time in your quality of your video, it's gonna help a lot more into getting out there than just having several really short videos of mm. average quality. Okay, and next question How often do you visit Montreal, and what's your fave thing about it? Uh, I've lived in Montreal about two, three years ago, in 2010 and 2011. No, wait, no, that's not right. In 2009, I lived there uh, for a year. I was going at the University of Montreal studying movie class. For a year, I did a minor there. And after that, I've come back to my small town. And from that point onward, I returned to Montreal to do a specialization. <laughs> that word sure. is hot to say. Um, <laughs> in uh, 3D modeling, so I oh. have a, a diploma in 3D modeling, and it's I I did get a job in that, but it was kind of a shady business, so I didn't stay there. And then I got back uh, home where I I was coming from, and from that point onward, I started making more video while doing my other job that I had until very recently. And from that point, I kind of, I didn't really return to Montreal, but I've lived there for about two or three years. 
and it, it's a cool place, but I wouldn't live there for all my life because I don't like crowds. I mean, I I don't like crowd as a general. If it's people that that are centered around me, like let's say I go to a convention, that's not the same thing. But like mm. people walking the street and just minding their own business, it's it really kind of pisses me off. And but there is a lot of cool stuff in Montreal, such as the uh, Chinatown, that is a great place. The food is outstanding, and they have a lot of anime content related. Uh, if you anime get for to, the win! Yeah, if you get to go to Montreal, this is definitely a spot you should check out because it's really pretty too. They have this giant arc thing when you enter it, and it's really cool. Okay, okay. That is really cool. Anime stuff is always great. I'm living in a very small... No, it's not that small, it's like 20,000 people around mm -hmm. here. And I've lived in a larger city before. And yeah, I moved here and it's a lot less people and it's um, more quiet around here and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. How long do you want to continue with making YouTube videos? Hopefully until I die, which hopefully is still in a while. Um, <laughs> I am just like channels like Smosh or big channel like that, PewDiePie. They're doing this constantly right now. I, I managed to make YouTube my full-time job. And if I can keep going and have it like to be a constant thing, then for God's sake, please let me keep this. It's an <laughs> amazing job. I wake up in the morning at around 8 a.m. I go to the gym, do like an hour, maybe two hours of workout, and then I come back. I do some script or editing or whatever I'm up to, and until like 4 or 5 p.m., then my girlfriend come back, come back from work, and we get to spend a little time together, or I get to do more work. Uh, we are trying to have a life together, so getting to move in the a giant house hopefully at some point right now i'm living in an apartment but we're planning on moving together in the house and uh eventually get babies as well oh so we'll have little misties <laughs> correct if it's a girl i am planning on naming her misty <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool <laughs> Uh, and second name will be uh, Chronexia. <laughs> no, we couldn't go with that. That would be a little <laughs> too problematic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess I can understand. <laughs> okay. Last question. Do you plan any changes regarding your channel? Well, I kind of spoke about it a little early on. Uh, I am planning something with the second channel. Uh, now that I'm working full-time, this is somewhat of a, a spoiler because I haven't announced it on my channel right now. This is a full-time job right now, so I am going to do a lot more content than I have been doing. I'm holding out on the announcement right now because I I have this trip to Mexico that I've planned a, a little while back. That's coming out uh, this Friday, That's coming, and after that I'll be back on Monday, but towards late Monday or maybe Tuesday I'm gonna do announcements stating that this channel has become full-time and I will have all as well the other channel running full pace which is gonna be having two of them uh, there's gonna be a lot more content there's gonna be reviews uh, there's another topic that I'm planning on talk well, intruding uh, some kind of something different I want to call it the uh, the wind-up series where I take a whole show and kind of squish it together into a one episode it's kind oh. of an abridged series but instead of doing the voice for every characters and everything it's just me stating okay they're going there they're going there they're doing that and then they get to fight this guy and that's it it's okay, just so me summing huge up spoilers <laughs> yeah exactly it's gonna be like it's, it's it's meant for people who would like to know about a show but don't want to spend like a hundred episodes watching it they just mm -hmm. want to know the story so they can move to something else or if okay. they started watching it and didn't really like it, they just want to know what happens, then they can watch this and it's going to be a much shorter version than the actual series. Oh. Uh, there's also the um, something that I had uh, before that was called the... Uh, uh, how was it called? Scrutiny. That was a show that I had on my second channel. Uh, this wasn't that 
I, it kind of got on a little. It's me watching like one episode, the first episode of a show, taking my input on every little detail that was about it, and then just um, putting that out so people can decide if they want to watch the uh, the show or just skip on it. Uh, this is going to be renewed uh, as well, but instead of being called Scrutiny, it's going to be called Virgin Views. Uh, this is going to be something else that's going to be tossed in. There's going to be reviews of uh, a show, just spoiler less. That's going to be something that's going to be out as well. Mm -hmm. And just a lot of top 10 is going to keep going, at least until the end of December, where I'm planning something at the end. Uh, after that, not sure if it's going to be weekly, but there's still going to be a lot of top 10s that's going to be coming out. Uh, but once I'll have cover over topics, then I'll just have to move to something else. But there's there's still top 10s planned for quite a while. Mm, okay, good to hear. <laughs> um, so we'll have to end this video here. I'm sorry. No, because no it's oh, it's 30 minutes already. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so thank you to all of you, you the viewers, for watching. <laughs> and a huge thanks to Misty for joining me. It was a pleasure, thank you for having me. Yeah, and I hope you guys like the speed paint that was running in the background. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. See ya. <laughs>